All right. Packages. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven packages. Ooh, I better plug my phone up. Eleven packages. Jeez. This is the rush after the uh, New Year. This says tubing. I better be careful opening that one. I don't know what tubing is, but. Huh? Oh, this is, uh, looks like high temperature glass braiding. Uh, this is probably something I ordered from my reflow oven. So if I run any new wires in there, I can thermally insulate them. I guess I could uh, find out if it's uh, flame proof. Yeah. Cool. Flame proof. Ooh, it stinks. <laughs> Next, <laughs> this package says it is kayak rivets. I don't think I ordered kayak rivets. I mean, it's possible. I order all kinds of weird stuff. Uh, these are just regular pop rivets. These are... I don't know what size. I'll have to look at what size I ordered. These are some kind of pop rivets. Because my toaster oven and all toaster ovens are essentially just folded sheet metal. So if you're going to manipulate them or modify them, I thought I might as well just buy rivets. I've never used rivets before. And I bought. I got this in my last e mailbag. This is a drill gun rivet thing. Still haven't figured out how it works. I know there's a collet in here. But I don't know how you get the collet to loosen to get the Maybe you have to push this all the way up and take that collar out. Why does that not spin? Let's try something else. Damn it, didn't go on straight. isn't too loud. It's probably too loud. All right, so it goes up. There we go. All right, so Jeez. Looks like all 
Okay, I get that these are the sizes, but how do I get the pop rivet to go in that collet? Well, if anybody knows how these work, let me know. I'll have to figure it out. I'm pretty sure maybe you have to use a... Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't move, so I don't need a retention pin. There's, I don't even know if that, that's a hole. That might be a hole. Let me see if that's a hole. I don't know. I think I'm going to give up on that for now. It doesn't even budge. No, I don't see anything in that hole. Oh, wait, I do. Yeah, there's definitely an opening. I don't know where the alignment is would be that you put to lock this to under. I think I have to get this loose and adjust this collet. So until I do that, I can't. I can't use this. All right. So obviously that goes there. This goes here. Nothing. I can't get it to move at all. Um. Oh well. But your uh, rivet goes in there. That collet holds it real tight. This is solid metal. This is all plastic. That's metal. And I think this just goes like like that. It won't go back yet. But and that just sticks out. And then you put it in your hole and then it pulls it back and it retracts it and against this face. And then it should just pop the metal, pop pop the backside in. But I cannot figure out how this thing's supposed to work. Anyway, I'll figure it out. Maybe I'll show how it works when I can get the stupid thing off. So, all right, next. Thought I'd make this a long mailbag. People have been complaining about my short, short mailbags. I <laughs> have my cats inside crying. What are you playing with? Wow, okay. All right, uh, heat sink. It's definitely a heat sink. Let me put this away. All right, this is one of those heat sinks for the uh, uh, solid state relays, I think. Definitely doesn't mate with that. Oh, huh, interesting. Well, that's weird. It's almost like something real small goes in there. Well, this one goes on this side. Oh, this is for the rail. 
That's for uh, probably a DIN rail. For some reason I thought it went this way. I guess all the pictures show it like that. I never realized. Yeah, so it just, okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, mating surface. Uh, polish that a little bit, put some silicone on there, or uh, heat paste. And then uh, that can go on whatever. Cool. Next package is 10 pieces, MLT8530. I just got one of these. I thought. Mm. Mm. These are 4148 diodes, 523. I just, I just ordered some of these and put them away. Why did I get more? Hmm. I'll have to look at that and see if that's the right thing. Because I just ordered a couple hundred of those. Hmm. Alrighty, next. Heat sinks. Oh, more heat sinks. Clunk. Oh, it's just a cute little heat sink. It's a nice, decent size. Not too big, not too small. You know, it's good for, you know, a project or something. It's actually a really good size. It's like the perfect size. Look at this. Uh. Wow, that's... <laughs> Like fits perfectly in my project box. That's interesting. Like perfectly. Another heat sink. Cute little heat sink. Next, bulb light. Light bulb? Light bulb or bulb light. What's it gonna be? Lots of insulation. Definitely a light bulb. Okay, it's a light bulb. Uh, this is a, a surprise, so I won't talk about that. It's a light bulb. Uh, this one says crowbar. Off the small crowbar. Oh, these are those um, spudgers. These are my favorite spudgers. They're uh, nice, dense plastic. They will give and break if you try too hard, but they're pretty strong. Um, I use them all the time, so I bought more. Um, and then... I got some like other ones. I got these ones thinking they would be as nice, but they're not. They're kind of cheap. I was hoping they were the same construction. But these don't feel as good. These feel very dense and almost a ni almost nylon, but these feel like a. Yeah, they're a little cheaper. I got date mold stamps on them too, which is weird. All right, next. Computer accessory. Uh, these are like little paste spreaders, uh, thermal paste spreaders. I thought they'd be cool for um, Maybe solder paste or a heat sink paste, you know, when working on stuff like that. I've always just put heat sinks on with just, you know, razor blade or something. Thought those looked kind of cool. Alrighty, next mounting block. Uh, 
Uh, this is an extruder for my 3D printer. The one that's on there is plastic, so I thought I'd buy a replacement. This is a real cheap uh, MK8 gold. Um, it's got a brass. Uh, it's got a. Well, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use the one that's on that stepper. But um, before mine just decides to break. Uh, I thought I'd get one of these. You can always print one of these, but I thought I'd just get a nice metal one. So that's the extruder housing for the uh, uh, Bowden extruder. I have a Monopress Mini Select. Uh, this says tools. Oh, okay. Uh, this is a fire blanket, welding blanket, I think it's called. And this is what I'm going to put in my toaster oven to insulate the inside. And it's not very big. I thought it was going to be 20 something inches. Is it doubled over? Hmm. I thought I wanted 24, 27 inches, something like that. Oh well, it's only a foot square. <laughs> So that's a welding blanket, fire blanket. It's supposed to be a fire... Oh, is that double? I can't tell if that's doubled or not. Looks like there's a seam in the middle, but that might be the way it's manufactured. That's weird. It's like it's... Oh, this is very strange. Maybe... Look at that. What in the heck? Is that the way it's manufactured? It's like two pieces put together. But they don't come apart. They're like... Stitched somehow. Felted together? Yeah, you can feel them move. So there must be a layer in the middle. Maybe it's, there's a fiberglass something in the middle. I don't know. This is cool. See? It's just sparkles. It's like carbon fiber or something. It smells, but not too bad. Not chemically or nothing. So, I thought that'd be cool to put inside the toaster oven, keep the heat in, um, and to separate some of the electronics. So, I might need a bigger piece. If you get the fiberglass, uh, the uh, they call it a... Con uh, what is it? Ceramic fire blankets, they they are you gotta be careful with them. You have to have them a ventilated space, you have to have a ventilator, you have to have gloves, uh, you can't get any of that stuff on you. Um, but this is perfectly safe. So I got this instead. Uh, it's like a rock wool kind of, uh, this is just fabric it feels like. Up next, mobile phone repair tool. This is a uh, heat gun angled thingamajob. Uh, let's see if it, it probably doesn't fit on mine because mine's the insert, not the outside outside uh, piece. Oh man! Oh man, that did not want to come off. There we go. All right, so when you're hot airing. You're uh, basically doing this, which uh, is kind of useless for being on camera, unless you put your camera at an angle. Um, so I thought it'd be cool if I could get like something that goes on the side, uh, an angled one that you can just do like this. Of course, I'll have to figure that out, how to get it on there. just falls off but uh that's the angle right there so you'd be doing this instead of this 
So, you, so then I can see it and the camera can see it a little bit better. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I'll have to check that out and see if I can get it mounted. Put that, put that back on there. No, I can't get it back on. That's it for the mailbag. Um, that's everything, I think. Yep. Now I gotta put all this crap away. <laughs> uh, so, put that on my printer. I think I gotta print a uh, shim for it. I think the gear doesn't line up with the hole. I also hate the gold, so maybe I'll try to get the gold off, gold anodization, see if I can remove it. It just clashes with my printer. Some heat sinks. This one might be good for um, eh, not really. Not as good as the PC heat sinks, they actually hold. Uh, sized a little tighter. I figure I could always use this and um, maybe uh, cut it down a little bit. Get this big chunk off the back and just cut it right there and just have a little more compact heat sink on there that can just stick out the back of something or fit in a weird shape. I don't know how much heat sinking this thing needs. I mean, something like that might be enough. I have all kinds of these sizes though. I have ones that fit probably perfectly on here. I saved all my old heat sinks from computers and stuff. And this glass braid. This glass braid is expensive. Um, this was the cheapest one I could find. Some of the nice, some of the good stuff is really expensive. I don't know why. <laughs>